we start into chapter four. Chapter four is still more derivatives. Um, officially, I believe it's more about, I can't remember what the title is, but about applications of derivatives. Okay. And so today, as we talk about this, it's as you look at word problems and pre response problems and stuff, what are ways that they use the derivative? You know, like really hitting on the fact that the derivative is a rate of change. Where do we see that within the problem? What does it mean within the problem? So I'm not really sure we're doing much, if any, math today, like any calculations. It's more just about understanding the interpretations. Okay? So um, as we look at this first page, in our last two units, we have defined the derivative. We've looked at it graphically, algebraically, numerically as a slope of the tangent line, right? You guys know when we talk derivative, we are talking slope of the tangent line. We also will define derivative as instantaneous rate of change. Okay, Those are ways that when we're working with those things, you're asked to find slope of the tangent line and the instantaneous rate of change. Your brain already goes to derivative. <clears throat> in this lesson, we're going to interpret the meaning of the derivative in a verbal manner as it relates to the context of real world problems. So a little bit of history. While Newton was developing his ideas of the infinitesimal calculus, namely when given a fluent, we don't use the word fluent in math though, we use the word function, to find its fluxion, again, we don't use the word flu fluxion, we call it a derivative, his thinking was concentrated on velocity. But today we know the derivative is important, reaches into many other areas involving, what did I, we talk about? Derivative is rate of change. Okay, anything involving rate of change there. If we look at the Leibniz notation, he stated that the variable y depended on x. And that is the idea that x is your independent variable, y is your dependent variable. And then the derivative could be expressed as dy dx. If we allow ourselves to think as d as representing a small difference in some process, okay, we are reminded that the derivative is simply the limit of ratios in the familiar form. So when we talk about dy dx, it's a change in y over the change in x, just like when we talk about slope. Um, similarly, we can read d dx as a single symbol, meaning the derivative with respect to x. Brings us to this new place of understanding the notation d dx of y. So the derivative of y with respect to x, or the derivative with respect to x of y. Leibniz notation can be a little cumbersome, so the dy dx. I know if you guys like me, you prefer to use the prime notation. Um, but a little cumbersome when you need to specify the exact x value where you need to evaluate the derivative. However, the benefit is you can read more about the rate in terms of what your variables are. So d y dx. It's easier, I think we'd all agree, it's easier to say, oh, I want to find the derivative at 3, so f prime of 3. However, dy dx evaluated at x equals 3 just kind of reminds us what we're taking the derivative of with respect to what. Okay? Now, as we look at these examples today, it's a lot of writing out definitions, interpreting, those type of things. So as we look at example one, Sean is cleaning out his saltwater fish tank and needs to drain some of the water in order to adjust the saline levels. If the volume of the tank V is in gallons, is being drained over time T in minutes, what is a meaningful interpretation of the following statement as it relates to Sean's fish tank? So as we see that right now, I would read that as dv dt, evaluate at t equals 3, is equal to negative 2. Right? That's just the mathematical read. But what does that mean in the context of this problem? So dv dt is the change in volume over the change in time, right? So here we're talking about the change in volume over the change in time. T equals 3. What kind of value is that? 
I just said it. It's a t value, which means it is a time, right? So t equals 3 means 3 what? 3 minutes. And this equals negative 2. So what are we saying there? If we think of kind of t equals 3 as kind of your x value, and this equals the y value, well, y value is the volume in this case, right? And so if we think of the volume, this negative 2 is the change in the volume. What's a negative mean? Decreasing, right? Okay. And volume here was measured in gallons. Okay, so we had gallons and minutes. So when time is three, so at three minutes, the volume is decreasing, right? At a rate of two gallons per minute. Now, if my volume is decreasing, what does it really mean in this problem? The volume is decreasing because what is Sean doing? He's draining some of the water, right? Okay. So that's the idea of you need to understand that's what they're looking at. Okay. When we talk about DVDT, DVDT would be measured in... gallons per minute, right? And so that's the idea of what you're trying to say. So in my notes, I have at three minutes, the fish tank is being drained at an instantaneous rate of two gallons per minute. You wouldn't even have to say instantaneous there, but. Definitely put your labels in there. Okay, at three minutes. The fish tank is being drained. And it's really good to use the word rate. At a rate of two gallons per minute. Okay. I feel like a lot of these derivatives we talked about today, you'll hear me use the word rate. You need to be able to acknowledge that the derivative is a rate. Does that work for you guys? That's the type of stuff we're doing today. Kind of different, right? Not our typical math lesson. Okay. Just like any other language course, we need to use proper name, spelling, grammar conventions. AP Calculus is no different than AP Language. There are many real-world functions that depend on variables other than x, y, or time. Learning to read and write correct notation will help you succeed on free, respon free response prompts, guys. In other words, part of what you are graded on on a free response is not always just your numerical answer. It's sometimes how you explain it, how you label it. So understanding what is a derivative, understanding its rate of change, is incredibly important in that scenario. Okay? So, some of what you're going to be doing in homework. Interpreting, right? Read each scenario. Write the proper notation for the derivative. The Alberta tar sands are one of the biggest oil reserves in the world. Yet, extracting the fossil fuel costs more than the profits made. If the cost, C, in dollars, to extract a barrel of oil is losing $3 on every barrel, write the derivative. <clears throat> so, if we talk about some variables here, what do we have? We already have defined cost, right? They told us cost, and they told us that cost is, la is uh, labeled in dollars. Okay. That's the only variable they gave us, but we're going to have to have two variables, guys. 
No way about it. No way around it. What does the cost depend on? Cost C. And then that base is based on to extract a barrel of oil. Okay. Losing $3 every barrel. So that cost is based on how many barrels are, what is it, extracted. So I'm going to use B for barrels or barrel. And that B for barrel is just saying it's $3 on every barrel, right? So this B for barrel is just saying the number of barrels, if you will. So what this is saying then, if cost is based on barrels, that means cost is based on the variable B. You could write that. Okay, I know how it's written in the answer key. is C equals F of B. And that's the equivalent of saying that when you see us write Y equals F of X, that's the equivalent of saying y is a function of x. So it's y equals, x is the variable within it. This one is going to be c equals, cost equals, b is the variable within it. Does that make sense? So with that in mind, how would we take the derivative? If this is y equals f of x, we usually say the derivative is dy dx, or we say the derivative is f prime of x, right? So if we throw these other variables in, we could say the derivative of f prime of b, or we could say, what could I say instead of dy dx? Derivative of the cost with respect, or derivative of the cost with respect to derivative of the barrel. Okay, because the cost is dependent on the number of barrels. How that cost is changing is dependent on how many barrels are extracted. So we could write it as F prime of B. However, I'll be honest, I'd rather you focus today on DC DB, which is the equivalence of DY DX, right? Or that problem that was on the front page, it was DV DT, right? Change in volume over change in time. This is change in cost over change in number of barrels. And what is the derivative equal to in this problem? Negative 3. Negative 3. Why negative? Yeah. So that cost is decreasing negative $3 for every barrel that is, what was it, extracted. And that's going to be negative 3, what kind of label? Change in cost over change in barrels. So this is going to be change in dollars per barrel. Okay, Your label, if you look at DCDB, use that to help you with your label. Okay, Because it's a change in cost, which cost was in dollars, over a change in barrel, which is number of barrels. Questions? Yes, no? Okay. I can't say that I've taught it like this before, so talk to me if I need to explain differently or, you know, let me know what I need to say differently. Or maybe you just need another example to help it sink in. Or maybe it's easy peasy and I just need to keep moving. The Deepwater Horizon oil spill is regarded as one of the largest environmental disasters in American history. The oil leak was discovered on April 22, 2010. Has it been that long ago? I don't know. I was six. So. I would say, I know, you guys were young. To me, it just seems like recent history, which it's not that forever ago. Just. I say, to me, that feels like it's a lot sooner. Because I, I always picture that being like further like before you guys were born, maybe. Yeah, that's what I think. Whereas I think of it as it just happened recently. So, okay. 
So the oil leak was discovered April 22nd, 2010. BP originally estimated that the flow rate was about 790 cubic meters per day at the end of the first week. That's a lot. I really don't. Okay, what variable should we talk about here? They didn't give me any, and we need to come up with some that makes sense in the problem, not just X and Y, please. What are we talking about here? And I would use, they give us a rate here, yes? Flow rate, so there's rate, was about 790. Use this label as a hint. Cubic meters per day. So what are the two variables we need to talk about? What? D per day. Okay. Or what is days a more specific piece of? Time. Time. Okay. Not against D for days, but oh, T for time. D. Uh, yeah, DD does get confusing. Okay. So I would talk about T for time. What was your other part you said? For what? Meters. But it's not just meters. Okay, and what is M cubed represent? Meters cubed is a label for what? What do you say? Volume. That's where I was trying to get us to go. Okay. I was trying to get us there. Not sure how to get you there. Sorry. So the oil leak, it's flowing, right? And I guess it's... I saw it came like straight from over there. It made a beeline for you. I saw this. Okay. So we're talking about that oil flowing, and it's measured in cubic meters. That oil, We're talking about the volume of the oil. So I'm going to talk about V for volume. And that volume is measured in cubic meters. And I'm going to talk about T for time. And time is measured in days. Okay? And so, and of course, that is the idea that volume is a function of time. Right? So when you write a volume formula here, it would be volume and then in terms of T. Now, they give us some information here, right? It says it was estimate, estimated to be 790 cubic meters per day when? Into the first week, which is seven days. So T is seven. When T is seven, the volume is that 790, right? So, what is this? How do I want to write this? I would have said the change in volume over time, so dvdt, evaluated when? When t equals 7. Is going to be equal to what? 790. And that is cubic meters per day. So basically, the derivative at 7 is 790. The rate of change at 7 days is 790. And we also could have said this as F prime of 7 is 790, right? Okay. Moving on to C, unless you got a question. You got to keep us moving. This is going to take longer to explain than I thought, so. Oof. Okay. Population P of the endangered mountain gorilla has an ongoing study tracking the number of gorillas since 1992. The population increased by 114 gorillas during 2003 of this same study. 
Okay, they gave me one for a uh, formula, uh, not formula, variable, yes. P for population. Officially, it's the population of gorillas, right? In other words, when I get to labeling, I'm going to probably say gorillas. What's my other variable? What? Time. And what is time measured in here? Years. So in other words, we're going to stick with that generic T for time, but we're going to measure it in years this time. So the idea that population is a function of time. Okay. Are you guessing ahead to what we're going to write? Population is a function of time. The change in population over time. The change in population over the change in years. Evaluated at what? Why 11? There's no 11 in this problem. Okay. Our start date was 1992, yes? They gave us 2003, and if you do the math, 2003 minus 1992 is 11. So the change in population over time, when t is 11, so at 11 years, is equal to what? 114. And what is the label on that 114? Gorillas per year. Okay, so that's saying 11 years into this study, their rate of change is 100, the gorillas are increasing 114 gorillas per year, or at, in one year. Okay, is this coming together at all for you? Maybe, kind of, I guess the key will be when you try and do it on your own, how much does it make sense? Okay, continuing on. Simple three, suppose a planet is discovered in 2024 and is named Newtonia. If the alien population, P of T, is recorded in millions of aliens, and T represents the number of years, excuse me, years since the planet's discovery, explain the meaning of each of the statements below. So, let's see. We have population P of T is recorded in, notice what it says here. Did you catch that it? it says millions of aliens? That makes a difference in how we explain our answers. T represents number of years since the planet's discovery. That's key to notice. And then explain the means. So P prime of 3 equals 0 0.5. Now, keep in mind, this is P of T, right? It's population over time. So, is it also helpful? P prime of T is going to be the change in population over the change in time. I don't know if that, you know, that's just me writing the same thing. That's not answering the question at all because we have to put this in words. Thoughts on what this means? Got it all coming together in your head? Give it a try. the population aliens I almost like it. I right, almost like it all the way, I guess. Do we agree with 2027? Because it's three years from 2024. Now, how did you say your last part? Okay, I agree with 500,000. 
Why did he say 500,000? It's half a million, which is 500,000. Now, the only part I didn't like is he said the population is 500,000. It's a derivative means it is a rate of change. This is a positive one half. So positive 500,000 means we are increasing at a rate of 500,000 aliens. Is it per year? Per year. Okay, so be careful. I'm guilty of that too. I just want to say, oh, it's 500,000. No, this is a derivative, so it's a rate. It is increasing at the rate of 500,000 aliens per year. I like it. Okay. So I'm going to say in three years, I shouldn't have said it that way. Well, in 2027, the alien population will be increasing at a rate of 500,000 aliens per year. Okay? Good. Okay. I guess I never said the alien population on Newtonia. Sorry. Okay. Okay, B. Besides derivatives, we're throwing in some inverse, right? Ew, love it. Okay. So inverse takes your input and output and flips them, right? So, I mean, if you think about in terms of, you know, an axis, instead of this being T and P, it's P and T is what it is. But what that means, what is 7.5? It's not time, it is population, or in other words, aliens. And then five is going to be your time or your years. Now, is this a rate? This isn't a derivative, is it? So this is just the population on Newtonia will be, what's 7.5 mean? 7.5 million aliens, not in five years, but five years after 2024, or in other words, in 2029, right? Okay, so just watch out. It just, you know, it switches really what the 7.5 and 5 represent, so... Write down some basics. The population on Newtonia will be 7.5 million aliens five years after 2024. So in 2029. Obviously, wording doesn't have to be exact, but you need to be able to express this, right? You can earn, earn more points on your free response the more you can express and explain and show you understand. Okay, C. Making my brain hurt. Now we've got to do the derivative of the inverse. So derivative means this is a rate of change, not the population will be, but there'll be a rate of change there. We 
because it's the inverse, I have to rethink my thought process too. So again, 7.5 is my aliens, right? So when the population Newtonia is 7.5 million aliens, what's that 0.75? It's our time, right? Or in other words, three-fourths of a year, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a positive three-fourths of a year. So it's going to take three-fourths of a year for the population to increase, how do I want to say this, by one million. So keep in change, this is derivative, right? And how should I write? Do I write? Normally we would say change in population over change in years. I'm not even going to try and write it like this in this form because I'm not exactly sure how I should write it in that form. So, okay. So when the population is seven and a half million aliens, it's going to take three fourths of a year to increase that population by one million. So per one unit, and one unit in this case is one million. Does that make sense? I have to stop and process that one. So when the population is 7.5 million aliens on Newtonia, if you want to get specific, I don't know what else we'd be talking about right here. It takes three-fourths of a year, or it will take three-fourths of a year for the population to increase by one unit, but in this case it's by one million, because that's what a unit is here. Because when we talked about population, the population is recorded in millions of aliens. And so one unit in this case is one million aliens. If that was just recorded, if it was just the population is recorded in just aliens, then that would be, it would take three-fourths of a year for the population to increase by one alien. It's, um, I guess, thinking of it as a rate. So if I think of it, this is a derivative, right? So if I think of it as 0.75 over 1, if that helps. And again, this is the inverse, so it's upside, or it's uh, upside down. So this is, an, it's time per population, if that makes sense. Okay, because normally a normal derivative would be the change in population over the change in time. Because this is the inverse and my input and output are flipped, it's a change in time over change in population. And I guess it technically wouldn't be wrong if you said it would take, well, no, you can't do that. I would say could you separate the three and four, but it doesn't really work when you already have that 7.5 over there, so. Does that help? Helps me as I try and figure out how to explain this. Okay, one more page when you guys are ready. Your homework is doing the same type stuff. Although I feel like the homework is doing more of what we're doing right now than anything. Just trying to put it all into sense. Okay. In the next examples, we're going to show how clues from the units can help you recognize interpretations of the derivatives as they relate to real-world scenarios.
So example four, suppose you launch a water balloon from a giant slingshot. Let S of T give the distance in feet that the water balloon traveled from its initial starting position, starting point, as a function of time t in seconds. Explain the meaning of the derivative notation. ds dt, evaluate t equals 2, or in other words, s prime of 2, is 38 feet per second. Are your physics brains seeing this? What are you thinking here? Huh? That we should do this. That we should do this. <laughs> that we should get a giant slingshot and launch a water balloon and see what we can hit. And Okay, well, but not exactly the direction I need to go. If S of T gives the distance, S of T is position, right? So what is S prime of T? What? Velocity, which is why I asked, what are your physics brains thinking? Okay. Yeah, and that's exactly what I would think of too. It is, as I'm assuming, at this point. Okay, so put it together, and you don't necessarily have to use the word velocity, although it kind of makes sense if you know if we're talking position or distance. I think that the derivative of it is velocity. So what do you got? It's the change in position over time, or in other words, the velocity. So is it by at two seconds after launch, the velocity would be 38 feet per second? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have the word instantaneous thrown in because officially the derivative represents instantaneous rate of change. So yeah, I have when t equals two seconds, the water balloon is moving at a velocity or instantaneous velocity of 38 feet per second. Okay. So put it back into the scenario of what we're talking about, which is the water balloon. So when t equals two seconds, the water balloon is moving at an instantaneous velocity of 38 feet per second. They gave a lot of information there. They put a label on the answer. So I think that makes it a little more, a little easier to interpret. Example five, the total cost C in dollars of an airplane flight is a function of the number of passengers in can be calculated by derivative airlines using the function C equals F of N. What does it mean to say F prime of 182 equals 58? Gotta love the name of the airlines, right? Or maybe just roll your eyes at it, but. So. What do you have here? What's 182 represent? Okay, this is our, if we just kind of break it down, which is what I have to do. Those are our passengers, right? What's 58 represent? Okay, this is cost, right? This is where my brain has to go. So I have to think, okay, what do each of those numbers represent? 
and then it's derivative. Derivative means it's a rate of change, right? So how are we going to put this into words? When there are 182 passengers, what's happening? And is it increasing or decreasing by fifty-eight dollars? Right, fifty-eight is positive, so that's going to be a fifty-eight dollar positive increase in the rate of change. So when there are one hundred and eighty-two passengers on the flight, the cost is increasing at a rate of fifty-eight dollars. I think it's per passenger, right? Yeah. Because again, remember, if we're thinking it's the change in cost over the change in N, right? So it's a change in cost per passenger. That's what my brain has to think there. So when there are 182 passengers, the cost will be increasing at a rate of $58 per passenger. Notice I threw that word rate in there again because it's derivative, right? Okay. One last overall example. If I don't slow us down, we can get it done. Number six talks about non-potable water is being pumped into a processing center where the depth in feet of the water at time t in hours is given by y equals h of t. Interpret the following statements using the proper units. Okay. Did you catch all the information they gave us? Depth is in feet. We're going to need to know that. Time is in hours. We're talking about H of T here. Interpret the following statements using the proper units. H of 7 equals 5. It's not a derivative. Okay. So this means, in other words, 7 is going to be our time, right? And this is going to be our height. So at 7 hours, the water is 5 feet deep. Does that make sense? At 7 hours, the water is 5 feet feet deep. It's not a derivative. Beware. It's not a derivative. We go back to the basics. V. H prime of 7 equals 0.6. And it's 0.6 feet per hour. Okay. So, yeah, remember this. We would think of this as dh dt, change in height over time. So we are going to think in terms of 
feet per hour when we label our derivative there. Okay, so it's a derivative. So this is a changing rate here at seven hours. The depth. Depth of water, is that what I want to say? Yeah. The depth of water is increasing. Increasing because it's positive. At a rate. Did you say instantaneous rate, or is it? I mean, it's. Would it not, or this is a derivative? You don't usually see it thrown in there, instantaneous thrown in there at this point. I don't know if that would make it wrong, though. Does that make sense? How, you know, you don't usually see it thrown in there. So at seven hours, the depth of water is increasing at a rate of six tenths feet per hour. Okay? C. Back to an inverse. Okay, so my input and output have switched, right? So 9 is going to be my time, and 7 is going to be my, I started to say depth, but height, whatever, you know, however you want to say it. So, yes, after 9 hours, the water is 7 feet deep. not a derivative so we're not nothing it's no rate changing or anything okay D derivative of an inverse Maybe that's more for me than you, but I, I have to think through this. So what's happening here? trying to think okay, I'm gonna say it's slightly different and you were we did one we did one on the other page like this didn't we yeah. I don't think you were here for 3c when we did 3c because this kind of relates back to how we talked about 3c so if we start with height because it's this is what's changing okay my 1.4 is what's that's the rate that's changing right there so when the Height of the water is seven feet. So when the depth of the water is seven feet is what I want to start with. This 1.4 is what's increasing, and it is positive, so it's increasing. But this is where we're going to say it's increasing one point, or it it takes 1.4 hours for, and what was our units here? To go one foot. Okay, this is where we talked about the whole, the alien thing earlier. Okay, so. When the water is seven feet deep. It takes 
1.4 hours for the water to increase one foot more or increase one foot. Okay, so you have to go back and look at what is our units here in terms of it's the time is 1.4 hours and that is 1.4 hours per foot here. Or if you think about this as 1.4 over 1, well this 1.4 is time over, and this is going to be um, time per foot because it's the inverse derivative. Okay? Okay, guys. Homework is doing a lot of the same stuff. I mean, we are doing math, but we're not doing math. Okay? So get homework done for tomorrow, please.